Give the Lord a rousing hand of praise on the day. Amen, amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. We got started a little early today. And thank God for all of you that are in the house. Amen. Amen. We got a full day today. And uh, after this is over, then most of us, some of us, will head to the convention center. Amen. And we'll see the rest of the day. Amen. 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 After all that good, good start, that good music, and that good singing, I, if David wasn't preaching today, I'd take my text right now. Amen. <laughs> Amen. He, he got some Inanola cheerleaders here. Amen. They here. Amen. He got some cheerleaders from Indianola. And uh, they friends of mine. And we thank God for them on the day. Amen. And you tell the rest of the new hopers that's still in the bed, you tell them they missed a treat this morning. Amen. I'll go if I have to go by myself. Amen. The Lord is in his holy temple and all the earth keeps silent before him. I want to invite your attention to the Gospel of Luke, the fifth chapter. And I want to start reading at verse 17. Gospel of Luke, the fifth chapter. And I'm going to start reading at verse 17. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, men brought in a bed, a man which was taken with a palsy. And they sought means to bring him in and lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tilling with his couch unto the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, What is this which speaketh blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts, whether it is easy? Yeah, to save thy sins be forgiven, thee are to save, rise up and walk. But that ye may know, that ye may know that the Son of Man have power upon earth to forgive sins. And he said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy couch and go into thine house. And immediately, he rose up before them and took up that whereupon he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. So reads the word of our God. Shall we pray? Oh, God, we thank you for this glorious day that you brought us together once again, that you woke us up this morning with our minds stayed on thee. Thank you, dear God, that when we woke up, we didn't try to put our shoes on our heads, and we didn't try to put our hats on our feet, but we were clothed in our right mind. Lord, we just say thank you. Thank you for bidding our days roll on a little while longer. Thank you that you look beyond our faults and so our needs. 
Thank you for bread on the table, dollars in our pockets, a roof over our head, a car to ride in, and friends to enjoy. Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for Jesus, who is our elder brother, our savior, our keeper, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Oh, God, we ask you to show yourself strong in this place today, like we know you can and we, and we know you will. Lord, I thank you today. I thank you for bringing me to this hour. I thank you for all that you've done in my life. Thank you for your amazing grace that looked beyond my faults and saw my need. Lord, I thank you today. I thank you because you've been mighty good to me. You've been mighty good to me beyond my wildest dreams. Oh, God, I praise your holy name on today. And I know that you're not through with me yet. The best is yet to be. Oh, God, bless every person here under the sound of my voice. And bless them with such blessing that they stand in need. Or anybody need healing that they let them reach out and touch the hem of your garment. And be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Anybody that's suffering from depression, let the Holy Spirit come in and move everything that's in the way that we might have joy unspeakable in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless all the sick among us. Deliver them in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, you said in your word that by your stripes we are healed. And then bless these United States of America. And Lord, we ask you now to heal the land. Bless the preacher that will share on today. May we all be better going out the door than we were coming in. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen.
You're trying to show out here, ain't you? Amen. God bless you. God bless you. I want to just hang this on the line of your mind. Uh, when uh, the event is over on the day at the convention center, David and I, we're going to be going to the annual session in Jackson for the uh, our convention. And, of course, I will be there all the week. I am presiding on... Tuesday at, at 3 o'clock, and uh, I uh, turned in one of my preacher friends, uh, Pastor Clifton King, and he will be doing the message uh, uh, Tuesday evening at 3 o'clock, and I will be presiding on that evening while he is up to preach. Amen. So you pray that all will be well with us. Amen. And after I return, there's some more work to be done. I will be down the street here at Mount Harb. I'll be teaching a class, The Miracles of Jesus. Uh, they're having their leadership school uh, next week, starting Monday. And uh, you should have received an email. I believe I saw one that says Rose sent out. And uh, any of you that wish to be a part of that school, you're privileged to do so. Amen. You don't necessarily have to take my class, but you can take a class. Amen. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's the way things are shaping up. God bless you. God keep you. And I pray that you'll continue to pray for our church and pray for all that the Lord has us to do in his wonderful and glorious name. All right, ushers, will you come now? Sister Kimball went to Chicago to her family reunion, amen. And uh, they chartered a bus. I would have gone, but I got so much going on, I just couldn't go this time, amen. So maybe next time I might be able to go, amen.
could do better than that. Y'all could do better than that. Have your burdens rolled away. Do you know, do you know who he is this morning? Do you know why you came here this morning? Do you know the Lord this morning? And if you know the Lord this morning, and you're not ashamed to show some sign, why don't you get up on your feet and give the Lord that you serve a wonderful praise Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall, at New Hope, we shall. I don't think you hear me. We shall. It's not raining, but we shall. Be glad in it. To the angel of this house, to my best friend, to my Eden buddy, uh, Reverend Kimball, and to his wife who is absent with us this morning, and all my brothers and sisters in Christ, good morning. Uh, I'm, we got some uh, spies here this morning. Uh, we got some Indian Nola folk here this morning. I'm so happy to see my in-laws this morning, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Hull. Their son married my aunt, and so it's good to see them here on, on the MacFarlane side. Not the Stevenson side, but the MacFarlane side. So it's good to see them here this morning. And I believe they brought a church member with them this morning. So it's good to see you as well. And, and it's also happy to see the members from the Grove. It's good to see Bear Grove this morning. Amen. My next door neighbors and also our new members who have joined Bear Grove. It's good to see them. Uh, uh, last time that I preached at Bear Grove, not the husband, but the wife came to me and, and they live here in Greenville and they asked me what church they can go visit while Bear Grove is closed on first and third. And my mind was just thinking, I said, I know a lot of Baptist preachers in Greenville that I can send them to, but, uh, Kimball, yeah, I said, but, <laughs> Kimball came up in my mind, and I said, I don't want to put them with anybody, so, they, as Reverend Kimball said, they keep coming and coming, so, I'm happy they took my advice, and they're coming and coming, and we're, I'm happy that they're here, amen. Amen. I'm not going to be before you long. Your pastor has told me yesterday we got a busy Sunday. And I know y'all want to hear him at, at the convention center, and we got to hit on the road. And before I preach, uh, a young preacher got up and preached on Sunday. Before he preached Sunday, he talked about he had a dog. And his dog always follows him to the bathroom to look at how his weight is doing. And then he came and told his members, said, I got a friend named David. He comes and preach for us, and he's not helping me. Tell him, wherever you see David, tell him to help a pastor out. So I, uh, some member from New Hope gave me a text and said, help Kimball out, and I said, I surely will. <laughs> so I, I will help him out. Uh, we will help him out, won't we? If you don't mind, stand on your feet. I am coming from, no, you don't have to stand. I'm coming from John, New Testament, chapter 8, verse 31 through the 32nd verse. John, the 8th chapter, verse 31, and ending at the 32nd verse. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you do not, I still hear pages moving. If you do not, say, preacher, wait a minute. All right, I don't. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, 
If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. You can be seated. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, it's preaching time, and we've come here to hear a word from you. Lord, they're not here to hear a word from Stevenson, but they're here to hear a word from on high. And Lord, I do not know what their problems are, but you know what their problems are. I don't know why they're here this morning, but we know that you have the answer for, it, for all of our needs. You have the answer for all of our problems, our doubts, and our, even our downfalls, you have the answer. And Lord God, I just pray that you hide me behind thy sacred cross. Anoint this preacher's lips of clay. And Lord, let them not hear Stevenson, but let them hear you. Heavenly Father, and empower all my powers engage to do your mass, do your will, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If you are like me that like to watch crime shows like Law and Order, uh, Perry Mason, or uh, even Ben Matlock now and then. Uh, you will see them in the courtroom and the judge will ask the, the defense and also the other lawyer to ask their witness to come to the witness stand. And before the witness can get on the witness stand, he or she will raise their right hand and put their left hand on the Bible and repeat what the officer will say. I will tell the truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. So I just came by to New Hope and have a little talk with you this morning about nothing but the truth. Uh, nothing but the truth. Uh, truth is a now. It means the quality or state of being true. It is like accuracy, correctness, and rightness. It has been said that truth is to your spirit what good is to your body, what light is to your eyes, what sweet melody to your ears. When Jesus said, I am the truth. Uh, he was implying that men are in error and need of light. If there is a time for Christians to be zealous for the truth, the time is now. Why don't you say the time is now? Uh, it's time for Christians to be zealous be engaged, be bold, not ashamed of the truth. Uh, Paul told young Timothy to preach in season and out of season. Uh, yeah, come on up with me. We'll be out of here in a minute. Uh, but the 21st century Christians in America are focused on out of season subjects. And we have neglected the in-season subjects uh, because we have neglected the right now subjects. We have left a vacuum to be filled by lies. Yeah, lies that say man can lay be a woman. That's a lie. Uh, lies that say that black people are not even human beings. That's a lie. Uh, lies that say that the world is flat, but you know that's a lie. 
being filled by lies. And I wondered this morning, are you tired of the lies? Uh, are, are you tired of the, the lies? You hear lies on TV. You hear lies from politicians. Vote for me and I'll set you free. If you just vote for me, I'll get you over. But now, every now and then, we know that's a lie. Uh, uh, are you tired of the lies this morning? Boyfriend tell his girlfriend, baby, I love you. And then find out she ha he has somebody else. Are you tired of the lies? Uh, 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 uh. Yes, Lord Jesus. Uh, many Christians today are choosing to follow the ways of the world and thinking like the world. Uh, ain't that a problem? Uh, the church move wherever the world say move. And the church thinks like the world tells it to think. And I wonder every now and then, do you wonder like I wonder, do, are we being what Christ has called us to be? Christ said if we stick to his word, then, every, then they know that we are his disciples. And I wonder do this morning, do they know you his disciples this morning? Uh, do, do, are you ashamed? Are, are somebody here this morning, before you leave out of here, can someone say that's a personal truth right there? Amen. Have you ever thought to yourself, am I not just telling the truth, but am I being about the truth? Uh, there's some churches today, I'm, no, no, that ain't that Sunday, but, <laughs> but we need churches today to be about the truth. Uh, George Bonner, the director of the research, said 58% of Americans rejects the idea of absolute truth. What you mean absolute truth? The word of God. The word of God is absolute. You, you can take that to the bank. God does not lie. God's word does not come back to him void. You can trust the Lord. You can trust his word. You can trust him wherever you go. You know you can trust the Lord. Do I have anybody in here can testify this morning that I can trust the Lord? Preacher, I know what you're talking about because I tried the Lord. Anybody in here know? that you can trust the Lord. Anybody in here know that you can trust his word, that you can go to bed at night and know that you can trust his word, that you can get up in the morning and you can trust his word. You can go anywhere around this world and still trust his word. He is absolute truth. And then George Bonner says, sad, but it's true that 40% range, 40% of Christians believe in absolute truth. 58 don't, 40% do. Uh, 58 reject God's word, and 40% Christians do. Uh, I don't think you hear me. 58 reject his word and 40 percent takes his word that lets me know that's a problem that that's a problem 58 percent don't like God's word rejects his word don't take his word they believe in everything else except the word of God but 40 percent of those who say I saw the light 40% of those I, at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and my burdens rolled away. 40% that say I'm on the battlefield for the Lord. 40% who say that they've been born again Christians believe in the word of God. That's a, that's a problem. And you might be asking, Reverend, I, 
what is the problem? How did we get in that sadful state? And I'm glad you asked. Point one, apathy in the pews. Uh, apathy, what is apathy? Apathy means lack of interest, lack of enthusiasm, and lack of concern. Uh, today's church has a lack of interest, lack of enthusiasm, and lack of concern when it comes to the truth, when it comes to the word of God. Uh, Brother Kimball, you know, some Christians believe that you and I and some other pastors out there that we are Superman. Uh, believe is all on us preachers to do all of the truth telling. But I came to bust somebody's bubble this morning because Paul says that the church is the pillar of truth. He didn't say that the pastor by himself was the pillar of truth. He did not say that the deacon by himself is the pillar of truth. He said the church that means everybody, from the top all the way down. That's everybody. Everybody is the pillar of truth. Uh, but we are not living up to our design that God has called us to be. Uh, my brothers and my sisters, it's time to wake up. It's time to stop playing. Have you seen the movie Color Purple? When they play patty cake, me and, me and you shall never part. That's what we do on the playground. On the church playground, we're playing patty cake while the world is going to hell in a basket. Why? Because the church ain't living up to truth. Uh, truth matters. Truth is important. Uh, look at our young people today. They do not know the truth. They need to know the truth. They need to know that they are somebody because God created them out of his image. And if God created you out of his image, that means you have a purpose in life. That's the truth. Uh, 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 the, prophet, the prophet Isaiah says, for truth is fallen in the street. And uprightness cannot enter. Uh, while truth is falling in the street, anarchy is on the rise. You don't, I don't have to tell you. You can watch it on TV. You can see what's going on in the world. Uh, while truth is falling on the street, the, uh, the culture of death is marching on. Up, up is down. Down is up. And while truth is falling, in the street. There, some people believe good is evil and evil is good because the church folk won't live up to the truth. Uh, we as Christians need to shake off the dust for a while. We as Christians need to pull on the full armor of God. The tr oh, yes, Lord. The Christians, we, those who know the Lord for sure, Need to be about his witness, not just in here. In here, when we come in here, we come to worship. We come to clap our hands. We come to shout and give God the praise and the glory. But the real service is out there. And what out there need is church folk. That's not a shame to tell the truth. And not just tell the truth, but be about the truth. Church folk can't go along just to get along with anybody. The church can't get along just because you are a Democrat or you are a Republican. I, if you ain't telling the truth, something's wrong. Yeah, that's it. Uh, that's something wrong. Leviticus 25.10 says, proclaim liberty. Liberty. What is liberty? God's word. God's word. Proclaim it all over. In your homes. 
even on your phone, when you're talking to your friends, your brother and your sister, you know they ain't saved. You know somebody in your family member ain't saved. You even know some friends of yours know they ain't saved. Instead of gossiping, why don't you tell them about Christ? Why don't you tell them about Jesus? Why don't you tell them about the Lord? Why don't you tell them the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life? Why don't you tell? You don't even have to preach to them. Just tell them about your life story. There's people, all people in darkness right now walking around with no hope. Walking around with no light in their eyes. Walking with their heads looking down, thinking that this is it. That this is it. There's nothing for them in the by and by. But you as Christians, that's a mighty good time to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. That's a mighty good time to tell somebody the truth this morning. Uh, we have to proclaim his truth. We got to tell his truth. We got to love his truth. We got to walk his truth. Oh, yes, Lord. New Hope, you got a legacy, New Hope. A great legacy. Your first pastor, George Washington Gales, he didn't just preach truth here. He proclaimed it in the public square. And even, even in the house of power, he proclaimed it there. You got a wonderful legacy. Great legacies like Reverend Humes. Great legacy like Reverend Jenkins and J.M. Kimball and Reverend Kimball. You have a great legacy. You got to live up to that legacy. That truth-telling legacy. And what God is looking for, God is looking for a church who's not ashamed to tell the truth. And I'm glad to say I believe I found the right church this morning. And I wonder, do hope, are you that church this morning? Are you going to be about the truth this morning? Are you going to tell the truth this morning? Uh, before I close, uh, before me and Reverend Kimball make a little detour to the convention center, uh, before we get on our Baptist journey, uh, before I close, I know somebody's wondering, Reverend, what should I do? Reverend, what's the, what, what can I do about the truth? And I'm glad that you asked, because God has given us the key. And God has given us the answer. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Uh, you missed it. If I, not Kimball, but if I, not Stevenson, if I, that said let there be, and be became was, if I, who put the sun and the moon into place, if I, who put the stars looking like shining diamonds resting on the black velvet of night, if I, if I that gave the world Moses, if I that walked with Enoch and you couldn't see him no more, if I gave Noah a boat, if I that gave the world, you don't hear me, if I, if I this morning, if I that took off immortality and put on, it, it put on mortality, if I that walked it on water, if I that taught the world how to live, if I that lifted up a bow down here, if I that said demons be still and demons shut up their hellish noise, if I could turn placid water into sweet wine, if I, this morning, do you know who I'm talking about this morning? Do you know who I'm talking about this morning? Do you know who I'm talking about this morning do hope? If I, that gave my hands to the nails, if I, that gave my back to the whip, if I, that gave my face to be spit on and slapped on, if I, that gave my side to the spear, 
If I that gave my whole body to a wooden cross, if I, if I that died on that wooden cross, he did not pass out. He did not have, he did not fall into a coma. He died. He didn't fall out like everybody else said. Some said he did, but he died. Do you know him this morning? Do you know who I'm talking about this morning? He died till the world shook up. He died till the world couldn't stand it. He gave up his dead. He died. Do you know who I'm talking about this morning? He died till the angels clapped their wings and covered their faces. They couldn't see the sight anymore. He died till the sun gave out his light. He died. Till the moon had a blood image and looked like blood was dripping from the sky. He died. Do you know who I'm talking about this morning? He's your doctor when you need him. He's your best friend when you need him. Do you know him this morning? Do you know him this morning? I know I probably got a few cheerleaders this morning. Do, any, do I have any cheerleaders who've been cheerleaders? Uh, won't you stand up on your feet? And when I say give me a J, say J. When I say give me an E, when I say give me an S, when I say give me a U, when I say give me an S, what that spell? Jesus. For Jesus is the truth. Jesus is correctness. Jesus is vitality. Jesus is ah, next time. came to preach today, didn't he? He told me he gonna get here at 8. I said, David, that's too early. 8.45 would be better. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, minister, for that message on today. Amen. All of us should embrace truth. Truth really matters in these last and evil days. Let's stand on our feet. For the Lord are on my side, tell me where should I be? Extend the invitation today. If it had been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Praise. Hey, amen. I'm, I'm thinking about filing a lawsuit because every time David preach look like they do more, more singing and hollering over him. And, and when I preach, they don't do all that. It's something wrong. I'm going I'm to have to see about that. Amen. Amen. You were most beautiful on today. Amen. Let's give Sister Lavelle a hand of praise. She came in. Amen. Now, now I'm gonna speak up for her. Now she not she not late. She not late. She 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 moved to a, a new location. She got a new home, 
and she wasn't aware that we starting early at nine. Amen. Amen. She no longer stand across the street. She stand in a nice location. And our deaconess, our deaconess have been working to give us some uh, new clothes and new bedding and to start off fresh. Amen. Amen. We, we have been praying that the Lord would give her a new start. Amen. And the Lord has done that. Amen. I was in conversation with some of our members and to be sure that the landlord would, would get her here on Sunday and then we are going to get her back to her home. Amen. Amen. Now she loves this church. And we got to help her keep hope alive. You agree with me? Amen. God bless you. God keep you. All right, come on, David. Dismiss us so we can get on out of here. Amen. Now, those who are coming to hear your pastor, please come by. I just laid the foundation for him. He's going to build on that house today. So what if... Why don't you come and hear your pastor before he heads to Jackson later? So, Lord, let us bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this worship service. And, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you bless the pastor of this church as he prepares to pour himself out this morning as well. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you bless this church and bless the members of this church and bless them and keep on blessing them. In your love and divine care, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. You are dismissed. Thank you. 